annihilated him last summer. That's the way boxing works when you have fan appeal. Arturo Gatti is 33 years old, one year younger than the opponent he's about to face, Thomas Domgard. Uh, Agatti gives away and or has an inch height advantage, I should say, and more to the point, a two and a half inch arm length advantage when measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. In some of his recent fights, he's been as much a jabber as a power puncher, and that could help him to do that tonight. They both weighed in at 147 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Arturo Gatti, Thomas Stamgard fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! All right, thank you, Harold. Thomas Domgard has held the European welterweight championship. He is an unbeaten fighter in terms of style. He's been described by some as a sort of Danish Arturo Gatti. And Arturo got a great scouting report on him uh, from his extremely close friend, Mickey Ward, because Ward went over and sparred with Domgard for about three weeks back in 1998, Manny. Yeah, well, that's interesting, but you know, sparring and the actual fights are two different things. I saw Domgard fight uh, for the first time about two or three days ago. It's terrible, but a little bit too slow. I think the speed of Mickey Ward and Arturo Gaddy is on a different level, and I think speed's gonna be a big factor. As a matter of fact, Arturo said he's going to be the fast fighter for this fight. So he's going to box, do something that he doesn't normally do. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Arturo Gatti come out, as he did against James Leha in the preparatory fight before Mayweather, and jab, 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 jab. But Damgard, who is unbeaten, fighting virtually all unknown fighters, all in Denmark, has been ranked fifth in the division by... Ring Magazine, that certainly suggests something about the fact that he's a world-class fighter, and he is the naturally stronger man. He's always fought in this class. A look at some of the opponents against whom Domgard has fought. Years ago, you saw Philip Holliday when he was in the lightweight division fighting against Shane Mosley. Greg Haugen, you may remember from a long time ago, here in the USA, a guy who had emerged originally from tough man contests. To us, Domgard said, I'm a lot like Gaddy, but unlike him, I haven't lost a bunch of fights. I'm unbeaten. That's because he hasn't thought the quality of opposition at Gaddy is fault. Would his crowd abandon him after he barely scratched the box score against Floyd Mayweather? The emphatic answer this weekend in Atlantic City, no, not at all. His visit to the 147-pound weight class didn't treat him particularly well. Gaddy says it will be different this time because he's grown, he's a bigger man in his 30s, and because now he won't have to start himself to make 140, which he says was an excruciating trip during his last several times. In fact, this week at a news conference in New York City, Arturo Gaddy drank a Diet Coke. Most boxing writers saw that as significant enough to write about in their columns. A sign of the new relaxation he enjoys. table set for the latest banquet in the unique career of Arturo Thunder Gaddy. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Caesars Atlantic City welcomes you to Boardwalk Hall here in the AC where tonight main events is proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBA Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Nemiroff, 
This event is dedicated to the memory of Roosevelt Gilbert and Jack Fisk. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Tony Orlando, and the International Boxing Association. At ringside, the three judges scoring will be Eugene Grant, John Pare, and Paul Venti. And inside the ring, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Lindsey Page. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, official weight, 147 pounds, a perfect professional record consisting of 37 bouts, 37 victories, including 27 knockouts from Mokhov, Denmark, the two-time European champion and former IBC World Welterweight Champion, the Fighting King Lionheart of Denmark, Thomas Do. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with blue, official weight, 147 pounds. Professional record, 39 victories, including 30 knockouts, with seven defeats from Jersey City, New Jersey. The two-time welterweight champion, the undisputed ultimate blood and guts warrior of boxing, Arturo. Thunder Gotti. All right, gentlemen, I already have explained it to you. I want a good, clean fight. Touch him up. Touch him up. Nice, Obey my commands at all times. Have a good, clean fight. Go well, back to you, corner, gentlemen. Atlantic City sent off the Miss America pageant packing to Las Vegas, but they kept Arturo Gatti. Because he's pretty? In their eyes, yes. Well, physically, looking at the two of them, Arturo seems to be just as strong as Tom God off the bat. Tom God is a southpaw. which may create some obstacles for Gaddy if, in fact, he does want to employ the jab as his be-all and end-all here tonight. And Arturo starts the fight by throwing six, seven, eight straight jabs, none of which reach the target. <laughs> Referee Lindsey Page, aware of the potential headbutt situation, which is always a part of a southpaw versus conventional fighter confrontation, particularly if you got two warriors who tend to go forward like this. Yeah, but Tom God has not thrown one punch yet. Now Gam Guard starts to release the right hand and pounds the right hand to Gaddy's body after having verbally implored Gaddy to come forward and fight with him. Well, he said that he wanted to try to get Gaddy into a slugfest and not let him box. He felt that would be more to his advantage. There's Arturo's money punch. Left hook to the watch body, it, landed. Gaddy targeting a right hand against Domgard. As is the case when you're fighting against a southpaw, the right hand straight up the shoot can be a useful weapon, and Gaddy seems to be seeing the target that way already. And there's a right hand to the body that lands perfectly. Well, Tom Guard seemed to be very much on a defensive fight. He just keeping his hands very close, trying to cry to get close to Gaddy, force him into a slug fence. Left hook to the body, left hook to the body again. Because Dom Guard fights in the southpaw stance. When he turns his shoulder forward toward Arturo, it brings the target for that left hook to the body very close. Dom Guard holds his hands high. That's the major reason that Gaddy is thrown 
five or six effective body punches already. Being an experienced fighter that yet he is, you notice he's not throwing a lot of power punches right now because he notices he hasn't got a clear target, so he's just using probing jabs. That's all, and occasionally loading up on a punch. He also broke his right hand in the last two of his three fights with Mickey Ward and has to be conscious somewhere deep in his mind about the possibility of breaking the right hand again. But now he switches to a southpaw stance, stays in the southpaw stance, and uses a right uppercut as a lead out of that stance, which is conventional, goes back to the southpaw stance again. for Arturo Gatti. With those punches he's thrown, Domgard hasn't been accurate except when going to the body. This is the first round Domgard has fought outside of Denmark. Not an impressive debut. And when we go to Thomas Domgard's corner where they will speak Danish, our interpreter is Mats Flightly. Yep. That's it. Okay. Are you okay? Okay. It's good work. It's really good work. You're moving your head. Rhythm. Now, when you shoot that right hand and when you come back with the hook, shoot, aim for his shoulder. Don't worry about trying to hit him in the head because he'll pull back. So, just aim for his shoulder with the hook, baby. Beautiful. Nice deep breath. Nice for life. Very good. Very good. Just keep doing what you're doing. Too. Being that Tom Guard is keeping his defense so tight, protecting his head, Gaddy's trying to hit the only target that's available, that's to the body. CompuBox numbers in round one. Gaddy 13 out of 69. Dom Guard threw 33, so he threw fewer than half as many punches as did Gaddy versus his three most recent opponents coming into the fight. Dom Guard had been averaging 80, punch around, 80 punches thrown per round. So obviously he fought the first round against Gaddy far differently than has been his action profile in previous fights. We heard Buddy McGirt telling Arturo Gatti to be satisfied to hit Thomas Dumgard on the shoulder with his left hook when he throws it. Why is that, Manny? Well, because he feels that he's going to start it bidding down as he starts a punch and he might touch him where the shoulder is, the head would be there by the time that the punch lands. Because every time you start a punch, the dumb guard starts dropping underneath the punches usually. Very seldom pulling back. Gaddy. Dumb guard lands a straight left hand, momentarily backs Gaddy up. Gaddy was focusing to the body. Now Gaddy fires a straight right hand upstairs and lands his own. Dumb guard starting to become much busier now as he flicks the jab out, flicks the jab out, and looks to try to get in another body shot. And as he becomes busier, he's going to leave himself open, possibly for a little short right hand right through the center. Gaddy still focusing on the body. Right hand to the body, left hand to the body. Now the right uppercut lands flush. Domgard fires his left to the body. Gaddy moves away. Domgard is moving in, putting a lot of pressure on, but not landing any blows. And now Arturo with a perfect right hand lead. Arturo's fighting a very smart fight. Picking his punches, not getting too carried away for him. He's burning himself out. Working like a boxer, not a brawler. A very, very smart fight. Kind of fight he's probably going to have to fight over and over in the welterweight division. And he's throwing his right hand the proper way when you fight a southpaw. Not loading up, just a little simple right hand. Short and to the point. He seems to be taking those punches well. But so far, that's the best you can say about Domgard. Gaddy sized Domgard up at close range for quite some time before he fired the left hook to the body that he wanted and then moved away. Domgard going over the top. Starting to unleash his own left hand more often. Trying to get in a power shot. Gaddy lands a left hook. And there's the left hook to the shoulder that Buddy McGirt talked about between rounds. And now that Dom Guard is loosening up and mounting a little bit more of an attack, Gaddy has more openings for his jab. Yes, more things to punch and work off of now. Exactly, and he uses the jab to set up a right hand and then fires a barrage of left hooks and lands a left hook upstairs. Domgard looking for a target on Gaddy's body, can't find it. Domgard continues to move his head a lot, 
Daddy contents himself with another body shot and then laces Domgard with a series of rights and lefts as the bell sounds and Domgard raises his gloves as he goes back to the corner as if he says, as if to say, I'm fine. Well, maybe this is the strategy that he wanted to employ in this fight. I can't ask for nothing. Only thing now, keep the left hand out so he don't come over your jab with his jab. Okay. February 12, tune in for a countdown to Vargas Mosley, a documentary style look at two of the sport's biggest stars as they head toward their highly anticipated matchup. Note the start time, Saturday night, the 11th, 12.15 a.m., thus the date of the 12th. And on February 25 on HBO Pay-Per-View, the live fight, Fernando Vargas against Shane Mosley. They're fighting at 154 pounds. Don't miss it. Okay? Like I tell you, any movement you does, you freeze them. Okay, just stay focused, okay? Stay focused. Stay focused. guard may not be a great Dane, but he is a tough Dane. He's not necessarily something rotten from Denmark. Now Gaddy switches to the southpaw stance again as we go to round number three. Arturo simply switching southpaw against a southpaw to set up a punching angle, and he finds one right there. There's a perfect left hand by Gaddy, and Domgard counters perfectly with a right hand. Who has the bigger punch? The man who's moved into the welterweight division or the man who's been there his whole career? Domgard, having fought his entire career at 147 pounds, Gaddy in only his fourth fight and at this point. What Domgard did was perfect right there. He blocked Gaddy's punches, and just as Gaddy was pulling away, he come at him with those little short punches because he got his hand in perfect position to do that. Because when he blocks punches, he still keeps his hands right in position to execute. Domgard seemingly quicker than before now as round three begins. Perhaps simply an effort to step up the energy and be more active. Or perhaps he's encouraged by something he's seen in the fight. Well, he, you know, Gaddy usually has to have a little room to punch. Not a lot, but yeah, he, he's a very good follow-through puncher. He turns all of his body through with his punches. But Domgard shoots those little short, pesky type punches. Faster hands for Arturo Gatti. He's able to land combinations while Domgard is still searching for an opportunity to punch. Seating rounds. Yeah, he can he can punch out all the short distance that Gaddy yeah, can punch out if he can get close. Let him go. Let him go. Left to the body by Domgard after he pawed it. Gaddy with a series of right hands over the top. Now the jab lands for Domgard. Gaddy has been considerably less assertive in this round than he was in the first two. Domgard's extra movement seems to have thrown Gaddy just a little bit for a loop. Straight right hand. Down the pipe, Lance Bertori comes back with a left hook to the body and a left hook upstairs. Gat is a tremendous puncher. Dan Gat is, is really bothered with that defense and those little short distance punches. Gat is having a problem getting away from him. He's crowding and getting those short punches out very effective. Dan Gat cuts the ring off well to stay close to Gatti, but he's just close enough to get hit. Arturo Gatti, born in Italy, raised in Montreal by Italian parents, totally beloved in New Jersey. Can I get the towel, guys? Get some air. That's it. Can we have some ice, please? Can we, can we get some ice, please? It's so beautiful what you're doing. Get him with the left. What you did in this round was brilliant. These are the little short punches right there that the damn guard has been affected with and will probably be more effective as the fight goes on. Maybe there's a different definition of brilliant 
in Denmark. <laughs> Round four of a scheduled 12 between Gaddy and Domgard. Harold, how do you have it so far? You know, Jim, I agree with Larry Merchant a thousand percent. I, I gotta tell you, this guy's walking in, and Arturo Gaddy's wrapping him with some tremendous shots. I mean, Thomas Kempton got, he scored a couple of right jabs. His left hand, for the better part, has been missing, and Gaddy's wrapping him with combinations downstairs, upstairs. Really, the really significant punches are being landed by Arturo Gaddy. Three to nothing, 30 27. Gaddy. Gaddy backed up against the ropes with a series of right uppercuts. Hammers down guard. Down guard comes back at Gaddy with a couple of lefts. Gaddy sits on the bottom rope and smiles as he moves away. I counted five straight uppercuts. I don't know if I've ever seen five straight uppercuts before. There's a little left that lands for down guard. Maybe Lennox Lewis did there somewhere along, did that somewhere along the way, maybe against Evander Holyfield in their second fight, but I agree. I don't Not know if I've run. seen a guy throw five straight uppercuts before. Yeah. I wonder if, if Baumgart's face is going to bust up because his eyes and nose are swollen and reddened already. But also, they're looking at the cheekbone area of Gaddy also. Left cheekbone. Took to the body from Gaddy, and now he comes back up with the uppercut. The great right uppercut. The right uppercut is making sweet music for Arturo. Great, great combination. The thing is, Damgard is making him fight still. After that, he comes right back with that little rhythm and makes him keep having a punch. He never stands back at a distance. He's putting the pressure on right away after every combination that he receives. And Arturo Gaddy twice shook the right hand, which is a potential indication that already he's having problems with the hand. Now he throws it again, continues to throw there. But in every previous instance when we've seen Gaddy break his hand during a fight, he shakes the right hand in the glove. Little left hand inside for Gaddy. Domgard is coming and coming, becoming more relentless. Gaddy uses the right hand to throw a body punch. Yeah, but Dan Gard is putting a lot of pressure on with those little short distance punches where he's very effective with, even though he doesn't have that much power. Gaddy's still throwing the right hand. Hard to tell whether there's any less authority on it. Remember, he broke it in both the second and third fights against Mickey Ward and won them both anyway. Gaddy taking a real punish, battering here. Those short punches are being effective because he's, when Gaddy's at a certain distance, he normally is safe because the guy can't hurt you. But with damn guard, it, he can still it. punch at those little six inch and 12 inch punches. Well, this guy is gonna test the conditioning of Gaddy by being so persistent. And now Gaddy backs him off with a right hand to end the round. As we go to Arturo's corner between rounds, we may get an indication of whether he hurt the right hand. Okay. All right. No, no, listen. Everything is fine. But this is what you got to do, baby. Relax. You fall into his plan. Stay relaxed. Just use your speed. Don't listen to the crowd. Okay? Stay relaxed. Get back to what you was doing earlier. Okay? Get your shots off and just turn out. Don't grab him, okay? And take one hand and spin him. That's all you got to do. Look here, look here. Come on, champ, come on, let's get back on track. Okay? Here you see Gaddy landing a series of right uppercuts, but they're not landing that, that solid. They're, most of them are grazing and grazing, and that one was on the glove, so actually none of them really are landing the solid on the chin. But still, he's expending a lot of energy, and when he finishes that, damn God comes right back with those old short punches when he wants to relax. By CompuBox count in round four, Domgard landed 48 out of 103 punches, including 35 of 64 power shots. It was a huge round for the Danish fighter. No clear indication in Gaddy's corner as to whether the right hand is hurt. We'll watch to see if he continues to throw it, but go. remember, when he broke it against Ward, he continued to throw it. Once again, as you can see, Gaddy has had a little bit punching room, but Damgard is getting closer, and when they get in a certain distance, Damgard is landing shots, but Gaddy can't. But Gaddy can turn the entire fight around with one punch, as he's proven in the past, so Damgard should never get too careless and too confident in this fight. Is it possible that Damgard has the sense 
He's the bigger, stronger guy. His welterweight career is telling, and he's getting more confident with each passing moment. Yes, but I, I think the fight is going pretty much as he expected, though, more so than Gaddy. But uh, right there, good example. Gaddy didn't land nothing while they met a chain. Now he lands the right uppercut, at least on the second try he did, and backs away. Baumgart's been tremendously active in the last couple of rounds whenever he gets Gaddy against the ropes like this. And, and, you know, and, and even when he gets hit, he immediately starts applying pressure. He never stands in one spot to give Gaddy a chance to get much confidence. He starts moving forward right away after. Every time Gaddy lands a good exchange, he moves right into Gaddy right away. There's a blow right into the cup by Domgard. Referee Lindsey Page did nothing about it. Gaddy with a huge right hand upstairs. Backs Domgard off. Uppercut again. Big left hook by Gaddy. Domgard lands a shot. They trade again at close range. And another huge left hook by Artur Gaddy. And another one. Dan Gard has not been in these type of adult fights before where Gaddy has it. We know Gaddy can keep going at this way. I don't know if Dan Gard can continue if the fight continues the way it's going right now. Well, and his face is beginning to show redness and swelling. You wonder who is going to cut first. Arturo Gaddy swollen slightly under both eyes. That's common for him. No bleeding so far. Them guys seem to be slowing down just a we can right now. They trade shots with reckless abandon. This is the kind of fight which has typified Arturo's entire career. Last time I'm going to tell you, next time I'm going to take a point. Lindsey Page threatening to take a point away from Domgard for low blow. Gary comes back in this round with another uppercut to punctuate the action. And I have to believe, based on that round, that the right hand is not broken. A little bit on the iPad. February 7, tune in for the next Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, a profile of Ozzie Guillen, the colorful and quotable manager of the world champion Chicago White Sox. What a manager. The mouthpiece. Can you see? Can you see me? Listen, I, I know the, the fight is tough. Who did we promise? What did we promise when we went up here? Damn God is very effective with those short distance punches because that's what he specializes in. But I don't think he has that much power in his punches as compared to Gaddy. It's not a good sign when the trainer says to his fighter, can you see? which happened in Dom Guard's corner. Well, I see a little bit of the speed slowing down a little bit in Dom Guard, and that's dangerous with Gaddy. In round five, the two fighters combined to throw 189 punches. That means, as usual, it's worth the price of admission in Boardwalk Hall. Gaddy again in the southpaw stance. We've seen this four or five different times during the fight. Why do you think he's doing that? Manual. It, it, simply because he probably feels that damn God is not prepared to fight a southpaw. Most southpaws hate to fight another southpaw. For the same reason that conventional fighters hate to fight southpaws, right? Because right? they're not used to it. Damn God is used to fighting everyone in a right-handed position, and all of a sudden, if a guy starts fighting him in a southpaw position, it throws him off a lot. Arturo switches back into a conventional stance after landing one right uppercut. Domgard still throwing, but not throwing with the same vigor as was the case around a round and a half ago. You mentioned the deficit in Domgard power. I'm thinking if Domgard had real power, he'd have cut Gaddy already, because he's yeah, made right. plenty of contact. But he doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't punch with that much power, but it's a type of a punches that can actually win fights and actually can, can accumulate them, can catch you and get you in trouble, because he starts landing so many of them. And, they, and you think he's finished, and he'll still be punching. Damgard got in a good left hand. Gaddy with a combination before he moved away. I think it was a little right hand, but it, it just, he's so close that Gaddy's not expecting to get hit. He feels he's safe in those distances. Gaddy winds 
up and Bolo punches Domgard in the stomach. Crowd loves it. Arturo going to his footwork. Domgard relentless. Coming and coming and coming. Taking and taking and taking. And giving and giving and giving right here. Wide swinging left hook by Gaddy. Straight right hand by Gaddy. Thrown full force. Domgard's got an excellent chin, at least good enough to take a Gatti shot, uh, shot so far. Let him go. Let him go. Gatti blocking body punches with both arms. Domgard banging away. Gatti rolls with a couple of punches upstairs. Domgard's head movement as he faces him, <laughs> almost as if to make fun of the Danish fighter. Well, he is annihilated him. One of the Danish fighter. Well, he is to Domgard as Mayweather was to him. Too quick. As long as you stay in front of him, if you're not punching, you gotta move that head. Okay? Nice deep breath. Here we go. One more. There we go, baby. Beautiful, champ. Beautiful. Now you're boxing now. See, as long as you keep him in front of you, he can't do nothing to you. Okay? When he get when he stop playing here, he might pull out a line. Okay? Okay? Can't play with you. He's not gonna play with you. Slitty. What in higher hand? What in the middle of the left hand? Overrasker him with him. Clip him. Surprise him with your left. Okay? Or else, bevæg dig. Believe in it. Move. Keep your head down. Men bruge den venstre hand mere end du har gjort. Use the left more than you have done earlier. Halfway through the fight, CompuBox averages per round. Gaddy 25 out of 79. Domgard 31 out of 83. Domgard landing more punches, but with less power, it seems, than Arturo Gaddy. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored? Touch it, Jim. Five rounds to one. 59, 55, Arturo Thundergatti. Jim, I still think that Arturo Thundergatti is moving. He's winning this with ring generalship. Tremendous punching. I mean, the hooks are really doing more damage. He's landing the hard, solid shots. Demgard is aggressive. There's no doubt he's relentless. Gets on top of Gatti, but he misses with the left hand and doesn't have enough power with the right. Five to one, Gatti. Gaddy momentarily looked as though he wanted to throw Domgard through the ropes into the lap of his trainer, Buddy McGirt. When you watched Manny Pacquiao beating Eric Morales, you were watching, oh, and there's blood on the forehead now of Tomas Domgard. Yeah, I think it's in the scalp. There's a hard right hand oh, by Gaddy. Oh, Gaddy act like he hurt his right hand. Absolutely, he shaking the hand. Yeah. It looks once again as though the right hand is hurt. Let him go. When you watched uh, Manny Pacquiao taking apart Eric Morales, you were seeing a trainer, Freddie Roach, who's made a very positive impact on the sport and on a number of fighters over the course of the past two or three years. In Gaddy's corner, the same is very true of Buddy McGirt, who trains Gaddy and, of uh, course, light heavyweight champion Antonio Tarver and others and has proven to be a terrific trainer after having been a very good prize fighter himself. And you know what's interesting? In both cases, they seem to have a great relationship with the fighters, in particular, Gaddy and... And Buddy. Buddy, Buddy seemed to have, I mean, of all of the fighters Buddy's worked with, even though he has a lot of them, seemed like this is the one that he's really connected to. And the same goes for Freddie. Well, Freddy. I mean, Freddie actually sort of violated the unwritten code of the sport when he decided to champion Pacquiao's cause in his disputes with, with the managers promoter. and promoters and took up the cudgel for Manny and actually uh, took some risks himself to try to make sure that Pacquiao got the right deal. Yes, and I feel that even though he's got a lot of fighters he worked with still, I can feel that spiritual connection between him and Manny Pacquiao too, and that makes a fighter be able to perform much better. And when Buddy stopped the last fight that Gaddy had with Mayweather, it was very impressive to me that he didn't want to see his fighter get hurt. Buddy said to Arturo Gaddy, after stopping his fight with Mayweather, he said, Arturo, I'm with you from the womb to the tomb. And I did that because it had to be done. And he did a good job too with Arturo's career. I think without him, I don't think his career would be around and would have been extended as long as it has been. To be totally honest, if McGirt hadn't stopped the fight, New Jersey State Athletic Commission Executive Director Larry Hazard would have. And he's known to do that. Straight left hand lands for Gaddy. 
Gaddy may be switching southpaw and throwing that straight left hand power punch because of whatever trouble he's having with the right hand. Now there's blood on Arturo's nose, but I think it's coming from the cut on Domgard's scalp. Domgard lands his share of punches, but he just doesn't have the power uh, that uh, Gaddy has. The mouthpiece. Thomas? Yeah. Here, here. Thomas, listen to me. Where are you? Okay. You're still here. You're doing a really good job. Thomas. Listen to me. You're trained to go 40 rounds. This is for the championship. You understand? Let's go get it. Keep that left hand out there. Keep him in front of you. When he gets close. Here you see where the two heads collide right there, and it could have been, the cut could have occurred just as well on Gaddy as it did on Damn God. Thank God it wasn't in a serious area such as the eye. So an accidental bump of heads leads to the bleeding on the top of Thomas Gomgard, Tom Guard's head, and uh, you may have noticed uh, in Dom Guard's corner, the cut man <clears throat> giving him an impromptu haircut. Didn't need to go to super cuts for that yeah. one. Power punches in round seven. Gaddy 22 out of 35. Domgard 11 out of 24. Domgard's punch output dropped to 66 punches from the 80s and the 90s where it had been in the four or five prior rounds. Perhaps Domgard was a little thrown off by the blood. seeming to hold the right hand back and use it sparingly. There he throws it again. Can't tell whether it's broken or simply bothering him. But frankly, when a fighter's broken his right hand as many times as Arturo has. Yes, it, it could have been one of those flare spots where you heard it from before. Maybe this a, a nerve and maybe not enough to the point where it can stop him from punching. Maybe he's gotten over it, but he's been proven it, that he will fight even with pain anyway before him, especially. You know, Gotti just turned his back on Domgard there for a moment, which is the kind of thing he did against Mayweather, and Mayweather knocked him down. If Domgard was a big puncher, he might have done something with the free shot. He did make contact. Now Gaddy slips, winds up in a conventional stance, throws the right hand again anyway. Both fighters look a little uncertain this round as to exactly what they want to do. Well, the one thing that seemed to be pretty obvious to me that Gaddy doesn't have too much fear of them God's power. Although Gaddy fell into the ropes off balance when Domgard hit him with a body shot there. I wonder if there is any fatigue showing in Gaddy right now. There's a hard right hand to the body by Arturo Gaddy. He reaches to try to do it again. That's what those body punches were set up for. He tried to throw those up because they had to set him up and shoot it straight down the middle on the chin. There's the difference in punching power, and now blood streaming from the mouth of Thomas Domgard. Break. Let him go. Looked like uh, Gaddy may have hurt his right hand. It landed that blow also. Gaddy switches to a southpaw stance and lands a left cross. Now he goes back into the conventional stance, throws an uppercut, and throws another right hand. How courageous is Arturo Gaddy as once again he appears to be fighting through the pain of perhaps a broken right hand and using it over and over because he has to win the fight. Well, damn guard is pretty damn tough himself because he's taking a woeful beating. With an odd head. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very good. Now, champ. Come here, man. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. Round nine coming up, baby. Okay? Round nine. Keep just touch him downstairs. Okay? He's breaking down slowly. Drink this. Drink this, champ. Okay? Drink that. What? Do as a tip for Believe in it. You're very close to win this. Okay? Okay? Pass him. I can't leave them sick. He, he doesn't like the ones you punch to the body. Use the left, but be tough. 
you have to be tough with him. It's been more tough training. Klip ham med den venstre hånd. Sæt dem i sækken på ham. Han skal bakkes op, og du gør det. See, I know, I know, I know. I think that's a code between them two that his right hand, I mean, Gaddis right hand, has been hurt. Yep. But they know not to say it because the commission may hear it and may stop the fight possibly. But uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, he signaled to Buddy that he has hurt his right hand. I believe that is exactly correct. You're right. That's what I know, I know, I know was about. And the import of I know, I know, I know was be quiet. Yes. But still, Gaddis being the warriors, he still is going to throw that right hand. Absolutely. Look at those left hooks. Those are classic signature Arturo Gatti left hooks, like the one that starts Rafael, or Gabe Ruelas, I should say, at a moment when Ruelas was beating him. Like the one that starts Wilson Rodriguez when he was blind in both eyes. The thing about Gatti, he can punch with both hands. Box, gentlemen, let's go. Do this, please. Baumgart chopping at an open Arturo Gatti with the left hand, only landed a glancing blow. Gatti chancing a right hand to the rib cage. Comes back with the left hook. Sometimes that can do more damage than a punch to the head because you're laying right on the elbow sometimes. And the guy's elbow and it really hurts, particularly your right thumb. That's how he broke the hand against Ward in one of the two yeah. fights. When Domgard lands openly at close range like this, you get to see the difference in punching power. Gaddy's punches tend to move Domgard. Domgard's punches land on Arturo, but Arturo keeps on throwing. Uh, Domgard doesn't have any real snap on his punches. They're punches with strength and not quickness or snap or right. power. You land enough of them, you can chop down somebody. But he's way behind in the fight. Does he have enough time to do it here? And it's pretty obvious to everybody that Gaddy has hurt his right hand now. Arturo switching southpaw again. Jabbing with that right hand. Popping it into the mouth of Thomas Domgard. But really opening up trying to land some damaging blows with his left. A lot of blood coming from the face. Maybe even the mouth now of Domgard. Yes, I believe he's bleeding from both the top of the head and the mouth. And those are two good straight left hand shots out of the southpaw stance. Now, we know Gaddy is now fighting in the southpaw so he can get power with his left hand. Exactly right. He can't throw the right hand. He just pawed with the right hand, and really his power now is for the most part with his left hand. And since he's fighting against a southpaw fighter, it's an ideal way to set up and make an angle for the punch. The fact that he can do it is tremendously helpful in a situation where clearly the right hand is hurt. He's got so much guts. It's unbelievable. Gaddy doing very little to try to get away from the punches of Thomas Domgard. Because by this point in the fight, he's determined he can take everything Domgard throws. Give me some ice. Give me some water. Are you okay? Thomas, put here. Listen, Thomas, listen. Thomas, hear me here. Listen. Can you hear what I'm saying? You're okay, eh? Are you okay? Now listen. Don't let him get to you now. He's, he's 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 he thinks you're tired. Are you okay? 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 Are more crucial for Gaddy than the, the rounds that he had with Mickey Ward because I think his head is really hurt very bad right now. And on top of that, we got a guy that's putting a lot of pressure on him. The ninth round was a brilliant display of punching accuracy for Gaddy, who threw 93 punches and landed 55 of them, including 41 out of 53 power shots. And again, he's working with what appears to be a potentially broken right hand. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Chip. Eight rounds to one. 89, 82, Arturo Thunder Gatti. You know, Jim, Arturo Gatti is a guy that bleeds on a contract. And you look at him, 
Does it have a cut over his eyes, under his eyes, that glitter from the nose? Uh -uh. Thomas damn God can't punch. He's relentless, he stays on top of him, but that doesn't mean win fights. What wins fights is the hard shots that Gaddy is there. To. Gaddy on clean, effective punching, eight to one. Let him go. Gaddy may go. need a round off here in the tenth yes. after having expended so much energy in the ninth. This may be the worst he's ever had his head out. I was watching, the camera watch didn't show his corner, but I was watching it entirely, and it was, it's really bad, and you can see him just shaking his head, so he's in bad, bad pain. He is discouraged by the pain in his right hand, but that's discouragement about the rest of his career, not about this fight. He's gonna fight through the fight and make it the best he can. Switching to the southpaw stance, still throwing the right hand as an uppercut. Look at the guts. Just in case Domgard thought his right hand was bothering him, <laughs> throws four or five. I mean, you just don't <laughs> see it. That one on top of the head could have reminded Gaddy of how much his hand bothers him. Absolutely. I expect him to go south for Oh, and he south. bends over, cringing in pain after throwing the right to the body. And, and hurt him with the right hand. both hands go. And he hurt damn God with a short right hand. It looked for a moment as though Gaddy was going to go to the floor in pain after throwing a right hand. But then he rose from the crouch and fired a series of punches. Well, either damn God is the, the toughest guy in Europe or maybe Gaddy doesn't hit that hard at this weight. Or maybe Daddy doesn't hit very hard with the right hand when it's broken, and Domgard knows the left hand is the money punt. It's hard to say off of this whether Arturo can survive in the welterweight division, Manny. Well, that thing, I, well I, yeah, it is hard to say, but I mean, his hand, I don't know if he's going to be able to continue to fight with much bigger, stronger guys that have bigger punches continually hurting that right hand like that. What an irony it would be if the career of the greatest blood and guts warrior of his era, a guy who has been noted for winning fights while cut, for winning fights while swollen and blinded, for winning fights from behind with big punches, if that career were foreshortened by a broken hand, it would be a disappointment. It is a disappointment because it's happening so often now that I don't know if it, it can ever be correctly healed. Do you want to continue? Give me the Vaseline. Now listen to me. He's going to give it all he got. You keep that head moving. Keep him in front of you. Don't let him get close to you. When he misses a shot, just spin him. Don't worry about trying to score. Right here, you see Gaddy land a tremendous short right hand right after indicating that he had hurt his right hand. You know, Domgard is a fighter. He's a real fighter. He wants to go on with this fight. But when the corner starts asking you if you want to go on, maybe the corner knows that he shouldn't go on. Well, it doesn't do much for your confidence, does it? When they ask you if you want to keep going. In the last two rounds, though, Arturo Gatti has been painting Thomas Domgard with power punches, he's landed 65 of 89 power shots in the ninth and 10th rounds. 11 of 12. Arturo Gatti's got to make it through five and a half more minutes with an apparently broken right hand. Domgard holds behind the head and hits Gatti. And Page will now deduct a point. One point. All the way around. One point. One against point. the fighter who clearly was again. holding Gaddy behind the head with the right hand while hitting him with the left. Gaddy, while standing over in the corner, incidentally, got some instructions from his good friend, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. The great Sweet Pea, who's about three rows away, stood up and yelled to Gaddy in the corner, and Gaddy looked and go. listened very carefully before going back to fight Domgar. That'll bring him out of their seats. Gaddy is still punching with power with his broken hand. I, I, it's unbelievable the courage that this man has. You just don't see it. Has anybody here taken an x-ray? 
And Dumgard's face shows blood streaming from both nostrils and his eyes. Yeah, you make a good point, Larry. We could be wrong about whether the hand is broken, but we've seen it before, and it certainly looks like the body language we've seen before in that situation. Yeah. You can be sure it's seriously damaged, whether it's the tendons and ligaments are gone or whatever. But can, we, can, we, can we extrapolate <laughs> from this side oh, how, how would Gaddy do against Baldemir, the new welterweight champion? I think he would do very Let well if his right hand holds up. Domgard's face is beginning to look yeah, grotesque. I, I think Gaddy, looking at his body and everything, he looks very good at walking away. You know, his body looks much more firm and stronger than even Damgard. Hey, look. It looks very strong. He's beating up a guy who's 28 and 0, has spent his whole career at welterweight, won the European welterweight championship. This, this is a few seconds away from being stopped. If Gary lands one more good punch, we might see at the end of the fight. Let me repeat, 37 and 0 with 28 knockouts. That was the point I wanted to make. So he's, he's annihilating a guy at close range who had won all of his previous fights and came here expecting to beat Arturo Gatti. And now he staggers him with the right hand and Lindsey Page stops the fight. And once again, the hero rises. The Gatti is mighty and shall prevail. It was everything they wanted it to be. I am impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they call him a fighter. Pure fighter. Throwback fighter. The epitome of a prize fighter. Tony DeMarco, Carmen Basilio. I, I think he top, tops all of those. He's been in more wars than all of them. And he still has that tremendous one-punch punching power. Rocky Graziano, Jake LaMotta. Tony Zale, these are the kinds of fighters to whom you must compare yeah. Arturo Gatti. This is fantastic. He's throwing power punches back and back. Knocked keep, him out with the right hand. Talk. Yes, and keeping a distance between them as he's punching. Knocked him out with what we think may be a broken right hand. Gatti closed the show. According to CompuBox, he landed 29 of 48 power shots in this last round of the fight. Good stoppage. Good stoppage. Guy's face was broken up. What a right hand shot that was. And before Page even stopped it, the fans were already cheering the Gaddy knockout. <sighs> Buddy McGirt. Pulling the gloves off of his showcase fighter. And now Michael Buffer stands by the ropes with the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, before we announce the official time, for this young man who came from death, record, Thomas Dongold. Let's give him a hand. Referee Lindsey Page calls a halt to the bout at 2 minutes, 54 seconds of round number 11. The winner, now a three-time world champion in three different divisions, the ultimate blood and guts warrior from Jersey City, New Jersey, Arturo Thunder. It's the 40th win and the 31st knockout of Gaddy's modern legend career. CompuBox numbers in the fight show Domgard landing 320 to 328 for Gaddy, but Domgard had 124 to 53 edge in jab connects. So he landed 71 more jabs than Gaddy. Take those away and you will see the stark margin in power punches for Arturo. And there you see it. He landed 79 more power punches, throwing 85 more and landed 
at a 56% connect percentage for power punches. If you do that and you can punch at all, you're going to break the other guy up. Damgard landed a lot of power punches, landed at a high rate, but he can't punch at all. So he didn't break Gaddy up. And if you can't break Gaddy up, you can't break anybody up. You got a problem. You know what's interesting? We're talking about the guys who have always been able to take a lot of punches and come back. A lot of guys have been able to do that, but when you speak of the great durable fighters, none of them that took punches and fought with injured hands. What he's been doing continually in most of his great fights. So that makes him special. It's amazing. Let's go to Larry Merchant with Arturo Gatti. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Arturo. Give us a mark for yourself in your first fight as a full welterweight. Uh, I felt good. You know, uh, I fought a real tough opponent. Uh, Thank God. You know, not, 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 not many people know him. In America, but uh, he showed, he, showed, he proved that he was a world-class fighter, very strong, very tough, and uh, especially coming back from a loss against me, where they're coming back against a tough guy like Dan Gard, left hand, it was very hard. Mickey Ward, who now hangs with you, sparred with him for two or three three weeks. Did he tell you that he was this tough? Yes, he told me don't get into a brawl with him. He's very strong. He's gonna get you tired and uh, box, and that's what I did. I tried to get into a couple exchange with him, and uh, I think he got the best of me in exchange. So. I started boxing more. All right, let's talk about your body. Do you think you broke your right hand or sprained it or just hurt it? What? Uh, my, my right hand is hurt, you know. It's been hurt for the last couple of years, and uh, it's almost, it's like if it, it feels just like if it's broken. It's not the bone, I think it's uh, the ligaments, the tendons, and uh, it happens almost every fight. If I hurt in the fourth round, and uh, I, I still use it, but it's not the same, you know, knowing that you have a right hand that's uh, injured. Is that one of the reasons you fought Southpaw so much? Uh, not really. Uh, actually, uh, Southpaw was working for me. My right uppercut was working well, so uh, buddy told me, you know, change once in a while, mix him up with him. I understand you also may have come into this fight with a rib injury. Is that true? Uh, I was uh, injured in training camp. I didn't mention it. I know my camp did, but it's something I keep it quiet. I'm a warrior. I come here to fight. I don't pull out of fights. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are wise guys. They told you guys. I, did. <laughs> I will. I will s say that yes, it wasn't you who told me about about the rib. Do you see yourself fighting Baldemir, the new welterweight champion, in your next fight? Uh, definitely. You know, uh, it's a it's a money fight for him. It's a opportunity for him. He can beat me. He's got the style. We'll make, we're going to make a great fight together. You know, with the same style and. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me and him. Did you come into this fight thinking, I have to win, otherwise it's over? Oh, definitely. After uh, losing my last fight, uh, you know, a lot of people tell me, well, are you going to keep fighting? I felt that wasn't my, my best against Mayweather at 140. And I told myself at 147, uh, then he went tonight, I would have hung the gloves. I would have hurt, but... Uh, how time. much time left do you need to heal and come back to fight? Uh, six weeks, six weeks. I'll be back in the ring in July. Also, hopefully, Valdemir gives me a chance. I'm sure you will, and that's going to be a great fight. Thank you for another great show, Arturo. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate Jim. it.